Last week, with the, in presence of the President of the European Parliament, opened this Ukrainian hub as a central place for not only for the Ukrainians in uh, refugees to Belgium, uh, for the help uh, uh, to Ukraine in need in the worst circumstances, but also to unite people in their attempt to fight against devil that came to our houses. Thank you to Natalia Melnik, the wife of the ambassador uh, of Ukraine to the EU. Thanks to Natalia, we really managed to do this event uh, very fast. Thanks, thanks to our Polish and Lithuanian, Lithuanian colleagues. And indeed, we do everything possible and impossible, not only in terms of the aid, but in terms of the geopolitical decisions. To our Polish and Lithuanian friends, really, thank you so much, because it's your support that our voice is hear, heard in the European Parliament, in Brussels, in the European Union. And uh, I am giving the first word uh, to Petra Sostrevichus, um, our friend from Lithuania. Today is a beautiful sunny day in Brussels. One more. And one more war day, 28th, if I'm correct, in Ukraine. Once Russians, led by bloody Putin, ranges a war against Ukraine and Ukrainians, against Euro Europe and Europeans. I'm very grateful for mobilization of Ukrainian community here in uh, Belgium, in Brussels, in Europe, for coming up with this idea, which is excellent one, excellent one, with our solidarity and our support for Ukraine, we are much stronger than the uh, armor of Putin. We will beat them up. We will push them down and we will see Ukraine once again fully being the European country. And indeed, look, uh, having Vareniki and Pirogi today, you will contribute, you will bring a charity contribution to those who are most in need in Ukraine. Eat more, contribute more. There must be a correction. Station Europe slash Ukraine. We have to ask uh, the Parliament's administration, by the way, to put Ukraine and colors of Ukraine uh, just above this uh, station Europe. Uh, dear friends, uh, well, it is uh, extremely important to have this Ukraine hub uh, here. Actually, since the first day, and we always speak that Thursday of, of the war on Ukraine, was then in uh, 2014, maybe less visible here in the West, uh, but still uh, all of us, uh, certainly from Central and Eastern Europe, we used to, to monitor developments and gather information that was useful in our daily work here in the European Parliament. I know that whatever we do is not enough. Uh, in comparison of your efforts uh, and, and uh, uh, as I say, we, we wake up grabbing for news and, and wishing you all the best uh, because I think that all of us know uh, the value of, of, of freedom. We can feel your uh, love for your country and, and we want simply to, to support you. Of course, uh, uh, you need Europe, but Europe needs you even more because uh, it's uh, not only fighting for European values as well, for your country, you're showing your patriotism, but what you show in resisting aggression is actually the best, the most beautiful manifestation of, of, of uh, uh, values of, of Western uh, civilization. So that is why it's not only politicians, not only elites, it is ordinary people in whole collective West. Surely in my country, uh, I can see it on, on every stage and I was puzzled by, by, by this. It, it, it is amazing how 
how how good feelings you were able also to to motivate in our countries. So we should be grateful to you for this and assist you in in every possible way. This week is very important. G7, European Council, extraordinary NATO NATO summit. Uh, we have to stay firm. In terms of the EU, there is necessity to send positive, encouraging message to Ukrainians about candidacy status, and that. In our part of Europe, we, we repeat uh, uh, very loudly. And uh, to Russia, it is to send also similarly powerful message by supporting you with many things you need to, to maintain this combat uh, and for you to feel re in reality this solidarity. Sanctions? much tighter than now, although these are quite, uh, uh, I would say, unprecedented for the first time used uh, to such extent, but still not sufficient. Uh, it should be really deterring Russia and means to, to, to fight in a variety of ways. You know that my country stays with me. Have you seen in the European Parliament that where in Russia some kind of Nazi regime is burning now. And how can Europe defend itself against that? Very good. I, Anna, maybe no, no, we will give a word to Andrus Kubilius, yes. who is sure. a, a great friend sure. of uh, sure. democratic Russia, but yes. not Putin's Russia. And, and I will start to answering your question you know, in a very simple way. This is our war. It's not just the war of Ukraine. It's our war. And we have three fronts in that war for our battle, common battle. One is Ukraine, another one is Western capitals, and the same one is for different Russia. That will create different, you know, totally different security situation on all European countries. And in order to win in those battles, of course, we need to, you know, deliver weapons, you know, to introduce, you know, harsh sanctions. We need to start to talk about, you know, candidate status, and not only candidate status, but membership in the EU. We need to look how, you know, with the Marshall Plan for Ukraine, we shall, you know, rebuild uh, Ukraine after the war. We need to look into, you know, International Tribunal for Putin. And in order to do that, we need to have, you know, besides uh, great militaries in Ukraine, military forces, we need to have, you know, battalions of political solidarity. And yesterday we created the first one, you know, with uh, a network of, uh, you know, global political, you know, people from different parliaments, which is called, you know, United for Ukraine. 160 members from different countries joined at the very beginning. 28 countries, you know, members of EU, United States, Canada, New Zealand, and even Greenland. So that's our, you know, that's our well. battalion. The first battalion is ready. So definitely, you know, I'm absolutely sure that, you know, we shall win in those battles. And Russia will be, you know, different. We shall see deputinized Russia, and that will be, you know, our answer. Very good. Thank you, Andrius. And we're looking forward to full implementation of your declaration. It's important to reiterate what my colleagues just said. This is a tough call for all of us, but this is a call that is worth pursuing for, not only to save lives of so many Ukrainians, it must be clear for us that in this fight we are firmly on the side of Ukraine and we do anything possible to strengthen them, to enable them to fight for their country, to enable them to secure their skies, and that is why we need a push for more um, military equipment and military support for our Ukrainian friends. I think this will be the key for the upcoming weeks and we will do anything possible to do this. And yes, we also, uh, it must be clear to us that we are not at the end of the uh, sanctions vis-a-vis -vis, um, Russia, vis-a-vis -vis Moscow. There are still other options that can be activated and they should be 
uh, on the table and continue to be on the table. I mean, we must prepare uh, for any options that are still outstanding. And number three, I uh, just spoke to some of the experts on those. We need to address the issue of responsibility, international responsibility and also financial responsibility of Russia and Moscow, but also of individuals who have enabled this regime to contribute to uh, restitutions and to rebuilding of Ukraine after this devastating and inhumane and criminal uh, aggression that we have witnessed. So these three uh, points on our agenda we will pursue also as part of our parliament agenda to support our Ukrainian friends by any means possible. Thank you, Sergei. Rafael, it will be hard to visit me. Actually, Ukrainians are now showing us what it means to be free and what it means to be Europeans. And when we have this discussion about Ukraine in Europe, I think the discussion is already over because Kiev today is the capital, the true capital of Europe. It's not right. here, it's in Kiev. And our future is not decided only in these buildings, it's decided in the streets of Mariupol, of Kharkiv, of Kiev, of every single Ukrainian town that is resisting Russian invasion. So our duty is to show maximum solidarity for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. And our duty is to do much more when it comes to sanction Putin's aggression. Our duty is to stop financing, to stop financing machine, Putin's war machine. Our duty is to take every single decision, even when it costs us something, to support the Ukrainian fight for democracy and freedom. Because let us be clear, if Ukrainians don't win this fight, if Russians are not beaten in Ukraine, then we won't know peace in our continent ever. So our future and Ukrainian future are already together impossible to dissociate. So fighting for Ukraine, helping Ukraine, it's helping ourselves. It's not only altruism, it's also self-consciousness, egoism that should lead us to do much more for Ukraine. Slava Ukraini. And no ifs, please. No. No, uh, it was a pleasure to attend the uh, founding meeting yesterday of the network. I think this is very important because we have all have to do our homework in the different capitals. Uh, we should, um, of course, extend this network. It's just the beginning, but I'm quite sure that I can convince many more members of parliament to join it. And I hope also in other countries uh, as to avoid, first of all, some fatigue in the different capitals, fatigue towards uh, sanctions or towards support for Ukraine. Very important to keep up uh, the good spirit and to keep up the sanctions and to extend them, to increase them. Uh, one example, for instance, the trade that we still do, some capitals, with, uh, with Russia uh, in Belgium, very concrete, the diamond trade. We should stop it because this is a billion uh, uh, worth of uh, billion euros worth of, of trade, and we are funding this barbaric war through this trade. It should stop, and we are working uh, very hard on that. And I think each capital should do its homework, and then we'll get there. Thank you, Mark. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first off, I want to thank the organizers Promote Ukraine. This is a great example of how civil society and government can work together and really make a difference. And it's great to see it happening here, but I want to also want to assure you that it's happening all over the world. Our communities in over 65 countries around the world are actively supporting Ukraine. But today, here in, here in Brussels, it's a historical day. It's a historical day because the leaders are gathering here to make uh, incredibly important decisions today. We want to make sure that we are telling them that today is their day to show strong, so solid support for Ukraine and to show solid support for Europe and for democracy in Europe. Because we can't take little steps. We can't just speak with words. Today we actually are calling on our leaders to make monumental decisions that will impact the future of the globe, that will impact thousands of lives that today are on the line of Ukraine fighting for freedom. And so we've gathered here to talk about what is it that Ukraine needs. I just returned from a trip to Ukraine, Poland, just recently in London, and now I'm back here. And what I've, what I've heard in Ukraine in meeting with Minister Kulaba, in meeting with other uh, officials in Ukraine, is that number one, Ukraine needs arms. 
Ukraine is running out of arms. They're running out of the necessary equipment, the rockets that are taking down the tanks and the aircraft. They need that, they need that today. And we are trying to shine a spotlight on that. Secondly, they need the aircraft. They need the aircraft to be able to take out those tanks. Because right now, this is an air terror war that's being waged against the Ukrainian people. And we, we are calling upon the NATO countries today to make those firm decisions, to give Ukraine those jets that they need to be able to, to stop that, this brutal war. I've talked to the refugees that are crossing the border into Poland. And it is, it is heart-wrenching to listen to them. Lots of this is not even being covered on, on, on media because the media can't get into these places like, like uh, Chernihiv. Chernihiv has been decimated. There is war crimes going on. People are being shot in the streets indiscriminately. I, I talked to a family who escaped, thankfully because the, the fields were frozen overnight and they were able to get over their, the fields. Otherwise, traveling on the roads, it was like a gauntlet where, where Russian soldiers and snipers were using Ukrainians for target practice. These are war crimes, ladies and gentlemen. This is a genocide against the Ukrainian people and it needs to be stopped with decisive action. And we're calling upon NATO leaders today and tomorrow when they gather to make those decisive decisions. Don't be afraid. Putin has escalated and continues to escalate. We can't wait any longer. We need to make concrete steps. And in terms of our European allies, we are calling upon the European Union and the Council of Europe to take definitive steps to declare that Ukraine will be a member of the EU and that Ukraine will have expedited status with the EU. Because unless they do so, Putin will use that as a bargaining chip. Right now, he is looking at bargaining chips. And EU membership is one of those that when Ukraine is brought to its knees because, because of their terror war, they may have to concede. And we need to make steps today that will prevent Ukraine from conceding. And membership to the EU needs to be adopted immediately and immediately today. In terms of sanctions, we need to take bold steps. I was at the polish uh, uh, Belarusian border, where there are convoys continuing to go back and forth. There are uh, Polish and Ukrainian citizens who are standing there blocking these trucks. We need to put a complete blockade on all Russian trade, to put a blockade on all Russian maritime trade. We need to shut down Russia's economy in order to shut down this war. Ladies and gentlemen, the international Ukrainian community is with you. We are here as a global Ukrainian community, over 20 million Ukrainians to support and call upon the international community on NATO and the EU to take definitive steps to support Ukraine. Slavo Kriyenye. Thank you, Paul. And for a short note from Anna. Yes. I, I'm sorry, just two sentences. Uh, I wanted to inform you, colleagues, that here among us are also members of, of uh, Georgian society former really very high-ranking diplomats, ambassadors, uh, deputy uh, uh, defense minister fighting Russia in Russia. In Georgia, Russia, Georgia, Georgia. Uh, so, so they, all of them support Ukraine. You know very well how much Georgian society is with you. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. And uh, Radek Skorsky. I summit did not grant Ukraine uh, the uh, candidate status. I think Ukraine has deserved it. Ukraine has fought for it. Um, and it's the least we could do. We also need to um, have an uh, energy union, in particular a gas union, so that if we need to trade, we trade on our terms and we deprive uh, Putin of excess profits. But this is a war. And the purpose of fighting a defensive war is to win. And what we need to do is to help Ukraine prevail. And by prevailing, I mean chasing the invaders out of their country. So we need to make sure that when countries pledge, the Panzerfaust and the Stingers and the Switchblades and the Javelins and the Enlaws and so on, that they actually reach the battlefields to enable the Ukrainians to do what they want to do. Slava Ukraine. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry for keeping you so long, but uh, Viola. Oh, okay. Viola! Thursday! Viola! Thursday! No, 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 it's okay. I mean, a short word from your side. Well, thank you very much for organizing, arranging, I think, all kinds of solidarity activities for Ukraine and support, raising awareness. And as Radek has said, we have to do everything in terms of military support, in terms of humanitarian support, which is necessary to let Ukraine survive and to make sure that next year we go to Ukraine, it will be a full-fledged um, export of, of grain, everything what the world needs, our Ukrainian friends, they have deserved their sovereignty, their independence, 
their nationality and we as friends will make sure uh, we stand on their side. Thank you so much for coming and thanks a lot for sharing responsibility and solidarity. Happy birthday to you, Viola. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are hands of Natalia and yeah, Marta. And I would like to uh, invite you to try at least. Uh, I hope something is still if left anything for you. Left. <laughs> Thank you.